We all need to ask questions of ourselves. And we need to do it pretty frequently because if we don't know ourselves, then we really can't know anybody else, right? It's pretty important. And what do we ask ourselves that we really aren't even aware of or we never even think about? The infinite, the infinite energies all around us have given us a lot of opportunities, a lot of opportunities to know ourselves. And a lot of us take that for granted and we don't do that. And sometimes when we start to ask ourselves questions or somebody evokes a question, a lot of times we'll lie to ourselves because it makes us feel better. Because looking in the mirror can be, a, can be scary, super scary. So today we're gonna have eight slides, just eight. So I invite everybody at home, everybody sitting on the couch, whatever you're doing, go along with the ride because I think you're gonna enjoy it. And we're gonna let this sink in, each one of these questions. And I'd like for you to ponder it while, we, while I ask. Where does your consciousness exist? We've kind of touched on that a lot here in the past. We know that scientifically the material body, like our physical being, is never the same at any moment. Our cells are always breaking off, our hair, our fingernails, you know, we all, everything goes away. We're drinking water nonstop that's being replaced. Where is this container, this bag of flesh? If everything is leaving me all the time, scientists kind of argue whether our body is new from every two years to seven years. So we probably think it's somewhere in between. So if we're new and our cells are replicating and they're forming these uh, new cells that make us appear to be older because that's what they're trained to do, where, where are we? Where is our consciousness? If we're steadily new all the time. Have you ever thought about that? Where were you before you were born? Like materially, materially. All the material that's in us right now existed before we were born. And we're constantly taking in all the material that has always been here. So if our physical matter, it makes up our body, you know, right now. And at different times before your consciousness came into your body, all this matter was something else. Even the people that we love so much that are now gone, their matter, they constantly was, were consuming all of that matter. And now the only thing that's left is the little bit of matter they had left inside of them. It's really interesting that it's just all here and a part of everywhere. How did our consciousness enter our body? Like how? Where did it come from? Scientists can't answer it. It confuses them. There's no explanation for it. Many religions say it's just God, spark of life, luck. Who knows, right? So where did our consciousness come from to enter our body? And is it inside of our body? You know, if you say yes, that your consciousness is inside of your body, well, like we just said, water evaporates, our cells change, they're constantly moving. What about when we cut our hair, trim our fingernails, shave? All of that, that's part of us. Science now knows that we have memories inside of our heart. There's stuff going on everywhere, like that's not just limited to our brain. So where is our consciousness if it's always changing? It's interesting to think about. And if our consciousness is not in our body, then where is it? It's just something to ponder on in your meditations. How about uh, the ripples, the patterns that you put out into the world? What patterns do you constantly think about? What, const what do you constantly do? Like, do you get revenge? Like, do you have a pattern of, I'm gonna pay you back, pal. You looked at my girl, so I probably need to punch you in the face. You know what I mean? What, do you, what are your patterns? Or do you just let it go? Or is everything a joke until it's not, Matt? <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, is, is it? Uh, do we respond? Are our patterns yelling, being a smart ass, using hurtful words? Or do we use calm tones? Like, what are our natural patterns? And do we live in I can sort of mentality or I can't? I can do that. I can do this. I can love better. I can have better relationships. I can. I can. Or is everything I can't? I can't really have romance because, you know, my husband's an ass. You know, I really can't do that. Or is it, I can. I can have it. It's interesting. What patterns do we tell ourselves? This is really interesting to me personally because energy from the smallest thing to the largest thing 
has poles. You know, it's positive and negative. Everything has a pole. And what do we gravitate to? Do we gravitate towards compassion or just dismissal, indifference? Do we have automatic empathy or do we have automatic disgust and disdain? Because we have those patterns, each one of us. Do we automatically gravitate to healthy communication? Most people don't because in this country, very few people have been taught how to properly communicate, practice the art of listening. Everybody is so self-centered. Just me, me, me. So what do you automatically fall back to? Most people, it's dysfunctional behavior. How about positive or negative word choices? Man, I've had a problem with this my whole life. I am really good at throwing out some negative words to people. Like, I am fantastic about it. Ask my buddy Colin out here. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm good at it. And I don't like to be good at it. I have to catch myself all the time. I mean, unless it's directed at Colin. But it's a, uh, it's a problem, and you have to recognize those things. Am I gravitated toward action or inaction? And, and that can be both. Like, some things we want to take action toward. You know, y'all all took action to come out here today. But some people want to take Depending on what we're talking about in our life, they don't want to do it. They want to not have any growth. They would rather stay stagnant. Some people have a hot temper. Some people just fly off. Or do we gravitate toward temperance? Are we emotional, like excited? Like, where's Randall? Randall, you get, do you get just emotionally excited when stuff happens? All the time all the time or do we try to find peace do we gravitate toward inner peace instead of that uh, or judgment versus assessment and we have to make assessments because we want to know if all of a sudden a gang of bikers came up here a bunch of Bonnie's friends and they wanted to beat us up you know we, we need to know we need to be able to assess that situation right but if they just pulled up we don't need to judge we don't need to make any snap judgment for good or bad we need to assess if they are a physical threat or not like, that's just natural. That's survival. But we don't have to fall to the just being judgmental, judgmental pricks. Are we positive or negative? Do we like to be around positive or negative people? Some people just like to be around positive, and they can't have anything that even remotely sounds like a, or looks like a frown. Matt. <laughs> so, have you ever thought about this? Think about this next time you have something to eat every time you have something to eat. Are you aware of the emotions that you actually feed your body? The emotions. Every one of these cows we eat, every time we go eat a fajita, every time we go somewhere to eat a steak, was that cow, was that chicken, was that lamb? Was it living in fear? Was it in one of these big nasty uh, cattle farms? Fearful, all those hormones seeping into that food, those chicken farms where they just have no freedom, they're nasty and they stink so bad you can smell them from miles away. What are those hormones doing to us when we eat them? We are eating the emotions of fear and anxiety. My cows are happy as hell. <laughs> and that's why we all, most of us here, participate in, uh, in making them happy and giving them gratitude before they become part of us. Whenever we were really blowing and going as a uh, operating farm here years ago, we came to learn that you can see the plants and they have electronic charges. Whenever you would harvest, the plants would, uh, technically it was like a scream. The plants were screaming. They were like, oh no. Like, big difference. Plant, natural charge, you start clipping their buddies, and all of a sudden the electric charge goes through the roof. Like they're scared. So, so our salads, everything we're eating, we think, oh, we're just eating a little piece of leaf. But that salad was really, really excited right before it died. When I was in Italy a couple of months ago, Jill and I experienced this beautiful winery and they played beautiful music for all the plants and for all the wine in the barrels. Because as we know, wine, water, it changes its vibrational frequency under a microscope and it becomes beautiful. They make beautiful patterns. Shouldn't we always put out our patterns in a beautiful way, have gratitude and beauty for everything that goes inside of us? 
might be a big, big change in the world. How do you react when your feelings get hurt? Most people just shut off. They just shut off. They get angry. They get resentful. They think the person that they've loved with all their heart all of a sudden pissed them off and they're like, they disgust me, I gotta go in the next room. But I mean, you were in love yesterday <laughs> and now you're not. It's a strange thing. You know, do we communicate by sharing in loving, respectful ways or do we and continue to have positive, mutually beneficial outcomes? Most people don't know how to do that. We need to practice that. It's one of the things that we do here on a regular basis. It's important. I'm going to give you all two examples of this that are not on the uh, script here. Colin and I were having a conversation the other day with a friend, and I told him he was acting incorrectly, and he thought that was not right. He thought about it for a minute because he was an adult, and I could tell his wheels were turning. He goes, okay, I think you were right about that. Most people aren't that smart. Most people will just tell you to screw off and shut down. I was his friend 10 minutes ago, but now he just pissed me off and I don't want to talk to him anymore. That's a big deal. I got my feelings hurt last Sunday. And my first, what I gravitated toward was, well, I can't believe she was such an ass. Like that really hurt my feelings. And it was here. It was last Sunday. I asked somebody that I have purposefully been working on a close relationship with because I think she's wonderful. I asked her if she would like to see my commercial that we've been working on that many of us here were very proud of. And she just kind of rolled her eyes and didn't have any interest in it. And it hurt my feelings. I instantly just walked off. I said, hmm, I wonder why she doesn't like me. I wonder why she doesn't care about me. I wonder why she's not interested in what we were doing. And then as I walked off, I started thinking, well, Kevin, that's pretty stupid of you. You don't know if she's having any sort of problem at home. You don't know if she's stressed out. You don't know anything why she didn't give a shit about seeing your commercial. So I just instantly jumped to a judgment and walked off. That was really stupid. <laughs> just really stupid. Because, you know, my mom and dad trained me to give a bunch of hugs, but they didn't train me really how to communicate. Well, the dad that raised me did that. My other dad's a jackass. Uh, do I have everything that I need? You know, when we're really stressed out, a lot of us are really stressed out. Do you have somebody that loves you? Do you have a roof? Do you have a kitchen? Can you take a shower? Do you have real relationships? Are you hungry? Do you have relatively decent health? Can you take your shoes off and go walk in nature? Do you have any sort of connection to the infinite? When all life seems so overwhelming, do you have a spiritual community you can hang out with and love and support and protect each other? If the answer to all of that is mostly yes, then what the hell are we always stressed out about? I mean, really, it's pretty fascinating to me. Now, I'm just going to suggest that we just let all of those things, whatever resonated with you and stuck in your mind, we're going to go have a fantastic, fantastic meditation. And... If anybody is not going to meditate with us, please go in there and shut the door and make no noise. <laughs> and, I mean like no noise, just don't even come out. If you need to go outside, use the other door over there. That's it. Oh, and if y'all want to come out and meditate with us, then come on, get off the couch. Come see us. We're only a short drive away. Thanks, we'll see you next time.